update. So we want to head out to the lab with Mike Bettison, uh, severe weather expert Dr. Forbes, to talk about that warning and the other threats. Yeah, that storm's gone now south of I-20, and it still has a tornado warning on it, Noller and Tyler, uh, Taylor counties. And we've seen that this has indeed produced at least one tornado. Indeed, and it has taken a, just before it got to Sweetwater, it definitely took a right turn, about a 30 degree right turn. So when that happens, it usually means that it's uh, rotating more strongly. Uh, it's angling up through an area at the moment that doesn't have very many communities, but it's 836, Buffalo Gap, 844, Tuscola. These are in Texas areas, uh, basically now heading south of Abilene. There's definitely at times been some decent rotation with this. Uh, the real rotation that would be the tornadic one is here. Uh, some of this other red and green is, is sometimes the false returns that are associated with a big hail that the storm has. What's so interesting about this storm is it, this one has produced the weakest um, couplet that we've seen on yeah. many of the storms, but it's the only one that's produced a confirmed tornado so far. Yeah, it uh, seemed to have had a couple of other features that I talked about about 10 minutes ago, right on the immediate edge of the jet stream and along a little boundary that had some extra wind shift. Maybe just gave it a little bit just more enough. of that low-level circulation, whereas the one far the north did not. Amazing to see. So right now, going south of I-20, as Dr. Forbes said, uh, relatively unpopular. We got a new tornado warning. Yeah, this is the Tulia storm. We can go back to that one if we want to. Um, but uh, here, let's let's hop up into that one. And we'll get the radar going for you here. That Tulia storm. That's the storm uh, that previously had been up in the Amarillo area that the chasers have been following for quite some time. All right, so let's pop that one up. There we go. So maybe oh, headed, oh, there, south, south, south of Plainview there. Okay, it's actually I got a you. flanking storm that's, that's the new one. so here is the, uh, this is the storm that has had the three inch hail that came through. It's got a flanking storm now on it off to the north and west of Floyd Ada, south and east of the Plainview area. Uh, and so, let's get yeah, those we're going to skip the counties. Doctor Floyd and Hale counties are having that the tornado warning. Uh, that will move into an area uh, just to the south of Lockney and into the north of the Floyd Ada area at the direction that it's currently going. It's we're going uh, probably, yeah, and, and this let's one definitely has some rotation, probably a little bit stronger velocities. Uh, going northeast and the green southwest than we've seen on, on most of the storms today. All right, so obviously we're going to follow there. That's right along Highway uh, 70. So this is going to be the MO of these storms to, uh, tonight, Dr. Forrest. But let's go ahead and fast forward and talk about some of the ingredients that we're watching for the days to come, which again includes a place like Texas. Yeah, and indeed, uh, tomorrow will be a lot like today. I think the storm's fairly isolated. We don't yet get the main upper level forcing come in, but we'll again have this unstable air, warm, moist air, low levels and with the jet stream blasting across it's kind of cold aloft so it's unstable enough we have a little ribbon in here up by uh, areas just west of Dallas that has the faster winds at about 10,000 feet stronger shear so some of this area uh, and I think there's going to be a little boundary again a wind shift line so north central and east central Texas along that boundary I've given a tornado condition index of four and then the threes for uh, twos to threes for much of the rest of the area and Friday it goes north yeah Friday now we begin to get a much stronger upper area system come in so that pulls the instability much farther to the north even up in Nebraska bigger area of those winds and so we'll have some tornado condition index values of five all the way up into Kansas and Missouri uh, and parts of eastern Oklahoma western uh, can uh, western Arkansas and uh, east of the Mississippi River on Ooh. Saturday for those Torcons of five chasers are drooling as we speak Dave and Alex I'm sure they are you picked a great night to watch the weather channel my friend absolutely and our coverage continues with Keith and Alex Wallace Currently in our area, 78 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 70. Thursday, thunderstorms, high 87, chance of rain 80%. Thursday night, thunderstorms early, low 72, chance of rain 80%. Here's our seven day outlook.
Well, happening right now, we are in the beginning stages of a multi-day severe weather outbreak with a lot of dangerous weather possible. Already today, we've seen everything from snow in Michigan to hail in Illinois, flooding rain in Texas, and damaging winds in New York and New Jersey. And that's not all. We're looking at the possibility of tornadoes in the central U.S. tonight. Well, thanks so much for being with us tonight. We are in extended live coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm Alex Wallace. And I'm Keith Carson. We have expert analysis in-house, and we also have the areas in the line of fire for tonight's storms. Meteorologist Kate Parker is live in Dallas. Kate? Yeah, you know, Keith, Alex, uh, I am here in Dallas. The thing is that the threat overnight tonight is what we're really honing in on for the Metroplex. Just to my south, we do have some thunderstorms going on right now. Some of those have been severe warned. That's just near Waco. If you go down 35, if you're driving south, you're going to see problems on the road. Now, the Metroplex currently, it looks pretty nice. Dallas, not a bad evening for you. I mean, we've got Reunion Tower there. We've got a couple breaks in the cloud, but for the most part today, you've seen these cloudy conditions, which actually has inhibited a little bit of that development. So Alex and uh, Keith, we're going to be watching this definitely through the overnight. I think that's going to be our biggest concern is after you go bed tonight, dangerous winds and hail a strong possibility. All right, Kate, we certainly appreciate it. Well, let's focus in on uh, the watch that we do have currently in effect, and there is a tornado watch there for us there west of Dallas, and that watch is out until 10 o'clock local time. That does include Wichita Falls, Abilene, the Childress area, working over towards Lubbock, and just east of Amarillo. So that's northwest of where Kate is at, and also seen some storms to the south. Let's get some expert analysis on what's happening right now with Mike Bettis and Dr. Greg Forbes in the lab. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. It looks like that entire area really between Amarillo and Dallas Fort Worth is really going to blow up as we go through the evening storms that'll hit Dallas Fort Worth after dark tonight. So a couple storms to follow includes around Waco, then over north of San Angelo, then over into the Panhandle of Texas. That one uh, storm uh, around uh, Sweetwater, this is south of I-20, has a tornado warning on it that goes uh, for Taylor County until 8:15 uh, this evening. We've got a couple of more warnings out there, including over toward the Waco area, and then we've also got the storm that's up there in the Panhandle of Texas. That's our newest warning, and that warning goes uh, this evening for about the next half hour or so Floyd in Hale County till 830. That includes the town of Lockton. Let's get some expert analysis with Dr. Greg Forbes. Dr. Forbes, what are you seeing on this storm in particular? Well, this Mike has been a storm that has formed on the flank of the storm that we have been watching earlier that had that three inch uh, diameter hail as it crossed I-27. Uh, it is now there's I-27. So there's that original storm. Now a new storm has just exploded just to the south and east of Plainview there in the Floyd and Hale counties. And that one has produced a brief tornado uh, just a few minutes ago. The hook is really well defined on this. There's a, a hail probably golf ball to baseball size and this one heading toward the Lockney area. The tornado will come down off of this hook heading southeast. Probably will get close to but maybe just north of the Floyd data area. Relatively low populations in terms of cities at any rate. Communities Muncie at about 823 probably about 830 just to the north of Floyd data unless it takes more of a right turn. Here's the high definition radar uh, right there. Can you see that little tornado symbol about two miles west of Aiken. Just a few minutes ago, there was a report of a tornado. And so here's where the inflow is coming in. Some of the rain wrapped air, rain cooled air wraps around this rotating thunderstorm. Taking a look at this and seeing what kind of velocities we're getting at the moment. Uh, pretty respectable velocities here. Greens and blues going off to the north and east. The reds going southwest. So that just a brand new uh, scan came in. So right about there is where the tornado would be located just uh, on the south east edge of where this hook comes around. So golf ball or large, larger hail coming down uh, Aiken, Lockney, just to the north of Muncie, and then possibly a tornado, Mike, that will be coming toward Muncie in the Texas area. This is all northwest Texas, Mike. All right, so I want to talk about that other one, Dr. Forbes, that we've been following very closely near Sweetwater. It's the one that we have had a confirmed tornado on. And north of I-20, that storm's now gone south of I-20. This is Taylor County till 8:15 uh, this evening. We definitely have a, a hook on that, and you can see that Buffalo Gap 823 is when a storm will be on you, 828 in Tuscola. Taking a look at the uh, velocities on this, uh, it's uh, sometimes hard to pick out, but it looks like it could be right in there. You might be having a, a weak couplet, so tornado worn storm, and this is the one we've actually seen some pictures of a storm near Roscoe with this one. Then we take you over toward uh, the Waco area. Big storm has uh, come right over top of us. Severe thunderstorm warning here. This is along I-35 Falls in McClellan counties. Maybe looking for some um, potentially as large as golf ball size hail with this storm. Threat tomorrow is expansive. Doesn't 
include Texas once again, and there is again a tornado threat. Our TORCON tomorrow for North Central and East Central Texas is a four. What that means is a 40% chance of tornadoes tomorrow, very similar to what we have today. The threat though, Alex and uh, Keith could go up as we go toward the weekend. We'll have more analysis of that still to come this evening with Dr. Greg Forbes. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, let's get back now into Texas, one of the highest spots for the TORCON of the day, which is out towards the Dallas area. Yeah, that's right. That's where we have our very own meteorologist, Kate Parker. She's there for us. And Kate, you've been out there all day, and a lot of the stormy weather hasn't reached the, the city center at this point, but that could change later tonight. Yeah, you know, Alex, the thing is, this is a huge metroplex. Millions upon millions of people live here. I'm in Dallas right now. Obviously, behind me, the skyline's starting to light up as the sun goes down. Looking beautiful, actually. Feels gorgeous. It's in the low 70s. You've got a nice breeze. But to our south, we have some pretty large thunderstorms. And you have a, an entire community here across the metroplex that's on high alert and should be on high alert through the overnight. Because as you might be winding down for bed, if you're not paying attention to the weather, you may be lulled into a false sense of security. It really is beautiful in the Metroplex right now. But here's the problem. Through the overnight, we have the risk of thunderstorms. The good news is they're going to arrive later. They look like they're going to be a little more widespread. This is all good news because uh, by the time they arrive, we're talking after midnight timing. We will have lost a lot of that instability from the day. We did get a couple breaks in clouds today. We did get a nice high dew point. We still have that going on. We have fuel for these thunderstorms. We still have the potential for some very strong winds that could be damaging. Uh, we'd still have the potential to see those uh, hail the, uh, storms that could really cause some pretty significant damage. Uh, and the tornado threat's still there, but the tornado threat is not as high as it would have been if these storms were arriving at 10 p.m. So it is a little bit later. It's while you're in bed. You have to have your severe weather plan in place, something to wake you up in the overnight hours. And as Mike Bettis was just saying, it's not just today for North Central Texas. It's tomorrow and Friday as well that you're under the gun for the potential severe weather. Keith, Alex, you have to be on alert. All right. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, good point. Especially those overnight storms, they can be very mm -hmm. dangerous. Uh, I want to show you some pictures uh, from near Abilene, Texas that we're getting in. Oh, that's a good looking storm there, huh? It sure is. Here we are west of Abilene. This is uh, Brian Corey sending this in. you got the roadway there. And look at those clouds building up into the sky. And you can clearly see where the storm is as well, mm. where the blue sky is. I mean, really picturesque. These are some of the scenes you get a chance to see in this part of the country where it's just so flat. And and they're pretty to, to the weather people, of course. They're ominous to others. You can see some of the wind shear in that other one. You can see the top of that anvil being pushed in one direction. And the low base of clouds with those low dew points, you have a better chance of getting those uh, low wild clouds. And from that, you have a better chance of some tornadoes. And there's a land spout near Roscoe, Texas. That's from today as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. So these are some of the scenes we'll be looking at over the next several days. That threat for strong, damaging winds, hail, and yes, tornadoes. That is going to be a risk all the way through the weekend. Yeah, we'll keep you updated. Stay with us. True Green presents The Yardleys. Dad! Sorry. Spring is on. Start your True Green lawn plan today. True Green. Live life outside. Constipated? Yeah. Dunkelex tablets can cause cramps, but not Philips. It has magnesium and works more naturally than stimulant laxatives for gentle cramp-free relief of occasional constipation. That works. Mm -hmm. Live the regular life. Philips. We could tell you about the years of research and development. How we forged advanced high-strength steel to make the frame stronger yet lighter. The countless hours spent testing the suspension and tuning every sound from the engine to the trunk. But until you get behind the wheel, you have no idea. The completely redesigned Hyundai Sonata. I'm Sam. Jim's here as well this morning. We're all in this together. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was good. And if you're watching AMHQ, then you know we got you up and out this morning. We love to see your pictures. All you got to do is show us something that's amazing out there. Every picture you share, we'll try to share it as well. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
Tonight, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 70. Thursday, thunderstorms. High, 87. Chance of rain, 80%. Thursday night, thunderstorms early. Low, 72. Chance of rain, 80%. Here's our seven-day outlook. The Weather Channel's most watched original program. And it just hit us. Is back. This is just the beginning of what's to come. Incredible. I've been Claritin Clear for 10 days. When your allergy symptoms start, doctors recommend taking one Claritin every day of your allergy season for continuous relief. With powerful 24-hour non-drowsy Claritin, live Claritin Clear every day. My budget was always second-guessing me when I'd buy stuff for the family. Finger hat. Finger hat. Finger hat. Finger hat. At Fingerhead.com, we can shop with low monthly payments on over 200,000 items and growing from brands like Samsung, Lego, and KitchenAid. Just click on over to Fingerhead.com to get the credit you deserve and great stuff for your family. Oh, not Fingerhead. I got that at a garage sale. For a dollar. I am never getting married. Mm. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah. We are never moving to the suburbs. We're never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there. Well, welcome back. Here we are looking live now. This is on a storm. And look at that pretty view here. This is from the Floyd Data area in Texas. That's where the bulk of the storms are, at least at this moment, this evening. A beautiful, picturesque view here of that storm that continues to rumble its way on through. You can see sort of that dark area there that's, that's sort of rushing down towards the surface. That's where the rain potential hail is with this storm. Wow, what a view there from, again, our tour of storm chaser in and around Floyd Data. Now, this is going to be something that we look for over the next few days, the threat for severe storms. And these storms will be capable of producing some very heavy rain that could lead to some potential flooding out there. Now, this is what we've seen in the month of April. And look at some of the totals that we've had. Houston, 7.79 inches of act in Houston. So far this month, 14 days where we've had some measurable rainfall there. Yeah, it's been quite a bit. Back over towards Birmingham, over eight inches of rain. New Orleans for you, approaching nine inches of rain. So a lot of these areas are quite soaked and we bring in a bit more rain and that could lead to some issues. Here's the radar right now. And again, very spotty in nature. We do have some clusters of storms, but over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico and then just south of Dallas, you see some storms there. Houston, at least at this point, you're pretty quiet and dry. Everything off towards your south and east. But again, we could see that changing as we start to work our way on into tomorrow. Chance for the showers and storms, severe risk in place, East Texas all the way along the Gulf Coast. Heading into Friday, some of the same areas having to deal with this as well. And again, that threat for the severe storms, including damaging winds, hail, tornadoes, but again, heavy rain that could lead to some problems. Saturday, we keep the risk for storms going. And even though we don't have red showing up on the map, there is going to be the potential for some of those to be strong and severe. Parts of Tennessee Valley and working your way into the deep south as well. So several days of having to deal with this. Here's the computer model forecast of how much rain we can anticipate here as we head through Friday. And you can see the bulk of the rain here, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, into Mississippi. Pretty widespread area here. We're in that dark shade of green. You can see two to three inches. The yellows, three to five, and a few pockets here where we may even see five to eight inches of rain. Of course, that could lead to some problems. Keith? All right, thanks, Alex. Let's go over to uh, Dr. Forbes now in the lab to take a look at some of those latest pictures we're getting from storm chasers. Interesting stuff there. Yeah, and a new, newly confirmed elephant trunk type tornado uh, just to the uh, four miles southwest of Lockney. Here's the uh, storm. Here's the storm. You see all of this black here. That's below cloud base, uh, and so the rain-free base. The tornadoes like to occur right at the interface there. Here's a big. It's almost like a, a flying saucer kind of cloud. A big layer of cloud here. Then the the tall storm going 
going up high. And at times, probably it may have been this that is lifted now, uh, part of what had been an elephant trunk type tornado. So uh, a classic uh, supercell, sort of a, a little bit on the low precipitation type, a little bit of the dry humidity kind of supercell. But you can almost see here the striations of this whole storm rotating, not just down at low levels, but going well up into the midst of the storm. So a dangerous storm there. Tornado warning is in effect for Floyd and Hale counties. There's been a tornado uh, south and west of Lockney. That would put it close to the Muncie area right now and headed toward the Floyd data area. So tornado at times is in progress heading your way if you're in those in or near those communities. Let's go back now to the studio. All right, thank you, Dr. Forbes. Uh, we'll keep updated on that. And we're going to go back to Dallas a little bit, check in with Cape Parker as well. Yeah, that's right. That's one of the cities that uh, could be dealing with some strong, severe storms, not just tonight, but in the coming days. Yeah, we want you to know that we'll be with you as well through the evening until at least uh, midnight Eastern time. If you're an adult with type 2 diabetes and your A1C is not at goal with certain diabetes pills or daily insulin, your doctor may be talking about adding medication to help lower your A1C. Ask your doctor if adding once a week Tansium is right for you. Once a week Tansium is an injectable prescription medicine that may improve blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes, along with diet and exercise. Once a week Tansium works by helping your body release its own natural insulin when it's needed. Tansium is not recommended as the first medicine to treat diabetes or in people with severe stomach or intestinal problems. Tansium is not insulin. It is not used to treat type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis and has not been studied with mealtime insulin. Do not take Tansium if you or your family have a history of medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you're allergic to Tansium or any of its ingredients. Stop using Tansium and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms of an allergic reaction, which may include itching, rash, or difficulty breathing. If you have signs of pancreatitis, such as severe stomach pain that will not go away and may move to your back, with or without vomiting. Or if you have symptoms of thyroid cancer, which include a lump or swelling in your neck, hoarseness, trouble swallowing, or shortness of breath. Tell your doctor about your medical conditions and all medicines you're taking. And if you're nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Taking Tansium with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases your risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects with Tansium include diarrhea, nausea, injection site reactions, cough, back pain, and cold or flu symptoms. Some serious side effects can lead to dehydration, which may cause kidney failure. Ask your doctor if adding once a week Tansium is right for you. Go to Tansium.com to learn if you may be eligible to receive Tansium free for 12 months. Make every week a Tansium week. The Fiat 500 isn't alone anymore. It's part of a big Italian family. In a matter of seconds, your life can change. Where kids still went to school. And it just hit us. This was it. The Weather Channel's most watched original program is back. Things are just going everywhere. It was a nightmare. And then it was silent. This is just the beginning of what's to come. They've got your numbers, history, and for a few, a jersey. The 2015 NFL Draft, with access only NFL Network can get. On the clock to Chicago, the 2015 NFL Draft, starting April 30th on NFL Network. Brought to you by your South Florida BMW Centers, providing legendary performance, exceptional offers, and no-cost maintenance. Visit BMWSFL.com for more details. At BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. One look at that Red Baron pizza, and you're going to love it from the first bite to the last. Because a perfect pizza requires a perfect crust. The sauce commands your attention. The cheese begs you to savor every bite. The pepperoni declares you have reached pizza nirvana. And that last slice? What's it worth to you? A perfect crust means a better pizza. Red Baron, love at first bite. The authentic taste of a brick oven pizza. Now available from Red Baron. Stay tuned for your Local on the 8, brought to you by Linux. What perfect feels like.
Linux makes the quietest system you can find. So even though it's the most powerful force in your home, it won't sound like it is. Save up to $1,700 on qualifying systems, now through June 12. For more information, contact your local Linux dealer. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 70. Thursday, thunderstorms. High, 87. Chance of rain, 80%. Thursday night, thunderstorms early. Low, 72. Chance of rain, 80%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Welcome back to Weather Center Live. We want to keep you on top of what's going on with severe weather. Yeah, that's right. We've got severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes. He's in the lab tracking some of these storms. An incredible picture and view of a storm there in uh, Texas, Dr. Forbes. Yeah, it really is. And you hear us talking about shear, the change of the winds with height, and how that is uh, a factor in storms. And we'll go very quickly here before they change that. Here's a manifestation of the shear. Can you see sort of this horizontal roll as if it was like a log? Well, that's a manifestation of the shear. There's a change of winds with height. And so these little tubes here are rolling. Rolling. This one may be rolling up quite big. And so we, we've got this whole little log here that's rolling along, a couple small ones. This is part of that low-level wind shear that gets tilted up into the thunderstorm and allows it to develop some rotation. The main part of the tornadic part of the storm is off here to the right. And so while they're just driving and changing position, we'll take a look at this on radar. And this is tornado warning for Floyd County. It has really turned right. It was originally going almost due east, not as going southeast. It's going to come right toward Floyd data. The rotation is right inside that little hook that's down on the southwest side. And so uh, that is going to be coming, tracking it here. Just probably the south of Muncie now. It looked like it had been heading directly toward there. Now it's heading more directly toward at about 835, the Floyd data area. So there has been a tornado reported just west of Muncie with this, south and west of the Loch Ness area. So it is a dangerous storm. Uh, a few minutes ago, there was a tornado reported here. The rotation is now about in this location. Let me, in fact, add the, the radar to show us that rotation. That's exactly where it is. The blue is going northbound, the red southbound. So the tornado vortex signature is about here. I'll ask the radar if there's any debris being picked up. Uh, there's some debris right here. That may be a part of the storm or tornado or part of the wind. Yeah, I would think so. I think we may have a tornado in progress uh, with this, at least something that's kicking up some, some debris there. I've uh, given a, uh, a view of this as if you were down to the south looking up toward the north at this storm. Big overshooting top at this, and I'll slide around. I made it such you could see the outside of the storm like it was clouds, and then the inside of the storm, and look in there. If, if I show it to you that way, a big hail suspended and then hail coming down to the ground and here's where the inflow comes up. So I believe we have, yes, we're back with the, uh, the chaser camera there and wow, you can see that whole shape there more or less now visually that I was showing you from my radar reconstruction. Uh, can we put that back in my telestrator, uh, AJ? Uh, we, we can see there the rain-free cloud base and then the, uh, the wall cloud that is hanging down from that, uh, the wall cloud off to the right of the picture. Uh, and then uh, there, excellent. Uh, so there is the wall cloud that I'm talking about hanging down below the prevailing cloud base. All of this over in here, I'll draw it in red, is just rain. So at this interface, we'll be looking for a potential of another tornado uh, that would form in here. And then all of this is rotating cloud that is part of that big updraft that is going up into the storm that I was just talking about. Maybe a little bit of uh, murkiness here. That could be a little bit of uh, gusty winds that are being pushed out in the area just 
just behind this wall cloud. That wall cloud represents the, the lowest part of that rotating updraft of this supercell thunderstorm that has this big, deep, long-lived rotating updraft with it that I have been talking about. So a dangerous storm there coming across Floyd and Hale counties, heading south and east right toward the Floyd data area. It's going about 20, 25 miles per hour. So it will be on you before too many minutes. Let's go back to the studio. All right, thank you, Dr. Forbes. And uh, a new picture into us, basically that same structure that you're seeing on that same system, just a really classic looking supercell there. We have our eyes on that. You can see uh, all the features Dr. Forbes just described. Alex? All right, Keith, and we'll be watching that threat for the severe weather over the next several days. Things really ramping up here. Now that we're in the latter part of April now, we're getting in that time of the year, April, May, June, is sort of the peak of tornado threat here. And you notice as we get into late April, where the highest risk is sort of that typical and classic tornado alley here, working our way through parts of Oklahoma down into Texas. And tomorrow, you notice the area Parts of Oklahoma, Texas, the red shaded area spreading a little bit into the lower Mississippi Valley. We're watching for the risk. But again, Dallas, again, you'll have that potential for some strong to severe storms. We've got Torcon values getting up in the four range, so about a 40% chance of a tornado within a 50 mile radius. Hey, neighbor, this weekend only at your neighborhood Ace, buy one bag of Scott's Weed and Feed and get Scott's Lawn Food for free. That's a $15.99 value because getting help at Ace is like going to your neighbor. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. My goal is to finally get in shape, not to be focusing on my moderate to severe chronic plaque psoriasis. So I finally made a decision to talk to my dermatologist about Humera. Humera works inside my body to target and help block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to my symptoms. In clinical trials, most adults with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis saw 75% skin clearance, and the majority of people were clear or almost clear in just four months. Humera can lower your ability to fight infections including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Ask your dermatologist about Humira, because with Humira, clear skin is possible. True Green presents... The Yardleys. Dad! Sorry. Spring is on. Start your True Green lawn plan today. True Green. Live life outside. Stick vacuums are supposed to make life easier. But that hasn't always been the case. the latest Dyson cordless vacuums have a powerful V6 digital motor to generate more suction than all other stick vacuums. <laughs> Even corded ones. The Fiat 500 isn't alone anymore. It's part of a big Italian family. Incredible. I've been Claritin Clear for 10 days. When your allergy symptoms start, doctors recommend taking one Claritin every day of your allergy season for continuous relief. With powerful 24-hour non-drowsy Claritin, live Claritin Clear every day. Zantac heartburn alert. Stop. Nexium can take 24 hours to work. Zantac's different. Zantac rushes relief in as little as 30 minutes. For relief without the wait, try Zantac. No pill relieves heartburn faster. And I'd like to put in my 15-year notice. You're quitting? Technically retiring, sir. With a little help from my State Farm agent, I plan to retire in 15 years. Wow, you're totally blindsiding me here. Who's going to manage your accounts? This is a devastating blow I was not prepared for. Take charge of your retirement. Talk to a State Farm agent today. I'm Sam. Jim's here as well this morning. We're all in this together. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was good. And if you're watching AMHQ, then you know we got you up and out this morning. We love to see your pictures. All you got to do is show us something that's amazing out there. Every picture you share, we'll try to share it as well. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under partly cloudy skies.
tonight, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 70. Thursday, thunderstorms. High, 87. Chance of rain, 80%. Thursday night, thunderstorms early. Low, 72. Chance of rain, 80%. Here's our seven-day outlook. The Weather Channel's most watched original program. And it just hit us. Is back. This is just the beginning of what's to come. Welcome back as we take a live look at a storm here near Floyd Data, Texas. We got storm chases that are out uh, this evening, getting us a little sort of up close and personal with these storms. And well, we've really seen some fantastic storm structure here. This is actually a tornado warned storm, at least for the next minute or so until 8.30 local time for Floyd uh, County there. So again, we're dealing with a potential tornado here. And you can see just very dark, ominous clouds at times. We've seen some lowering there, uh, a bit of a wall cloud, but haven't at least seen at least on on some of these pictures, uh, any uh, tornadic activity. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that we'll see it if it happens. There's chasers all around it, mm -hmm. but at the moment, it is a tornado warning system. Thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel as we bring you extended coverage of tonight's severe weather threat. Now we got flooding rain, hail, damaging winds, even tornadoes, all of those possible. And we're not just talking tonight, but throughout the coming days. So let's get right to where storms are firing up right now. Yeah, for that, we're going to head to the lab with severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes and meteorologist Mike Bettis. Guys, Alex and uh, Keith, thank you very much. Uh, focusing on those storms, especially across Texas this evening. Some of them have produced some tornadoes. Some have produced some huge hail. And in some places, that hail has stacked up almost six inches deep. There's a look at our tornado watch. It goes until 10 o'clock Central Time this evening from uh, toward Amarillo over toward Wichita Falls. And those storms are going to fill in as we go into Dallas for the remainder of the evening. Taking you just south and east of Amarillo, the storms that we've been following for quite some time now for several hours. Severe thunderstorm warnings on these. And the one for Floyd County right in there in Floyd Dada, that's an area right along a Highway 70 that's a real focus for us. At one point had a pretty good hook echo on this. Uh, Dr. Forbes, you've been looking at this one the entire time. What do you see with it right now? It looks like that hook echo not nearly as prevalent anymore. Yeah, it has weakened a little bit and accordingly it's taken a little bit of a left turn again. When, it, when they rotate rapidly, more rapidly, they turn to the right. When they rotate less rapidly, they turn a little bit back to the left. So the tornado circulation, if there is one, looks like it may now miss by a mile or two Floyd Ada just to the north and east, whereas the last time I talked to you, it looked like it would go right over Floyd data. That said, uh, still Floyd data could be in the path, and especially just to the north and east within minutes now. Uh, and you can see a little bit of an odd flow boundary coming off. See, see these little green lines? So it's kicking up some gusty winds there uh, from, the, uh, from the northwest around the flanks there. We have a live picture from this area on the left. I'll continue right at the moment, not showing any tornadoes. There's been two brief tornado reports west of Aiken and south and west of Lockney with this storm. That seems to be the character of this particular storm. So I've taken a, a slice of the storm here. Uh, it maybe has wrapped up and choked off a little bit of its warm inflow. There's a hail core here. That that uh, air with a little gust front has come around in here and I think choked off some of the warm inflow that I was talking about. Uh, but let's take a look at the velocity signature on this. Looks kind of weak at the moment. Maybe just a little bit of a velocity right in about that, that location. Uh, so still could produce a tornado and that would again be just to the north and east of Floyd 8. I took a slice through this storm. Actually let me go back and we'll tilt it up in the vertical. So I took the slice across the storm like that across that little uh, wannabe hook -er area and so uh, turning it up into the vertical this is the south and west this is off to the north and east so there's a pretty strong updraft that comes up into there right up to the overshooting top. It's about 40,000 feet high about nearly eight miles high. Note how the updraft tilts and so as the big hail forms it can fall out it gets away from the center line of the updraft here whereas that hail forms here where it's right underneath or right in the core of the updraft it mulls around there sort of migrates over and then falls to the ground Mike so that's sort of in a quick lesson the way that big hail forms in these kind of supercell tilted and rotating thunderstorms as we continue to look at the storm there in the chaser photographs Mike. All right I'm going to take you over toward the storms near Abilene because they're racing just now south of Abilene 
trailing right now toward Tuscola. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Callahan, Runnels, and Taylor County right now. So coming right over Highway 83 at this point. Could be watching for some large hail and some very gusty winds as storm pushes off to the southeast. Could be looking for golf ball size hail. You got to be inside with this storm. So headed toward Lawn, maybe around 846 this evening and Oakland around 852 this evening. Then we take you over to Waco. We've been hammered with a huge storm here. Big downpours, big hail with this storm and one severe thunderstorm one just north of Rosebud here for Falls County. So Chilton, Lot, and Marlin, all those cities could be impacted by this. We tilt this three dimensionally. These cloud tops, especially over here around Fairfield, have been up around 40,000 feet. So they've had some vertical build to them. You'll get some uh, ice crystals at the top of those clouds because the temperatures are really, really cold. You get some hail that's produced here. Some of them look like they're coming down a bit, maybe collapsing a bit. So the hail coming out of those storms right now is uh, falling out ahead of the storm as it pushes east. But you take a look at the hail tracker here, and especially when you were, say, west of I-35, we had some big hail. Hail estimated uh, north of Temple, about three and a half inches, and now east of I-35, a little bit less as the storms are again collapsing a bit around Thornton or just south of Thornton, a little less than two inches in diameter, but still more than enough to meet these severe weather criteria and the severe thunderstorm warning. All right, let's take it to tomorrow and show you what happens. Similar areas under the gun for severe storms, including the possibility of tornadoes. For north central and east central Texas, this includes Dallas. A four is your Torcon. A zero to ten scale, your chances are four out of ten, about a 40% chance of tornadoes. On Friday, moisture and the best atmospheric dynamics head a little bit farther north even, so Kansas and now Oklahoma become targets and maybe even southwest Missouri. A five is your Torcon on Friday and then a five in eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas as well. Take you down to the east Texas and then northern and uh, western Louisiana. A four is your Torcon, so from say Tyler over to Shreveport has it for you on Friday as well. Guys, a couple of days of a lot of action and fr uh, Thursday and Friday could really ramp up the threat too. All right, thank you, Mike. Going to get busy. Let's go back to the Lone Star State Torque on a four there in North Texas, as Mike talked about. That includes the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Man, meteorologist Kate Parker has been live in Dallas all night. And Kate, the stormy weather staying generally to your south. There's one storm well to the west in Abilene, but 